hi um welcome back to my youtube channel um which i understand has been very quiet for about a year um and it's been quiet for reasons and i'm not going to go into the reasons but since we learned the news that pete would be banned in um amateur gardening and in um, bagged compost effectively from 2024 and since a lot of people have been saying oh but I've had no luck with peat free compost I just thought that I would revive it a bit and and do some talking about not just peat free gardening but about gardening sort of with both climate and biodiversity in mind and obviously that includes peat free compost. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the myths that there are around peat free. Now, there is no doubt that just as with any other compost, there are some really great products out there and there are some really rubbish products out there. Um, I think that that will change once peat free becomes the de facto all you can buy, because I honestly believe that a lot of the poor peat free has been manufactured by people whose main products and therefore whose main income comes from peat based composts. Um, so creating a good peat free compost isn't going to keep people buying the peat. Um, call me a cynic but I really do think that that's the case. Um, so I think we will see an increase in um, in the productivity and the and the quality of all peat free composts come 2024. Um, but what I also think is that we are likely to see cost level off and that will likely mean level up as compost will be a more expensive thing to manufacture. And of course, the reason that it will be more expensive to manufacture is that most of these large compost manufacturers have leases on big pieces of peatland where they constantly extract peat um, and and that's where they're that, that's where they make their money um, they won't be able to do that anymore so therefore that kind of cheap access to an ingredient will be gone so I think that the most important thing to talk about before we even talk about bagged compost is actually how we use compost and why we buy bagged compost in the first place um, it seems slightly bizarre that a product that effectively we can all make in our gardens those of us who are fortunate enough to have gardens is something that we go out and buy um, and my big comment right now is that actually one of the most important things that anybody can do that doesn't have a compost heap is to make a compost heap and to learn how to compost um, and with that I'm going to just caveat a couple of things so first of all composting sounds Oh, it's really simple. It's just putting waste stuff into a plastic container and it'll, it'll magically make compost. And it won't. Um, composting is a process just like anything else. It's a, it's a scientific process like anything else. Um, and, um, th and I'm not going to start talking about composting because there are a million people on the internet who are doing that in really great ways. Um, but if you are somebody who's never composted before or somebody who struggles to make good compost I'm just going to suggest that you go and follow and subscribe to a load of people on here who are compost experts and who spend a lot of their gardening lives making compost um, there are some brilliant channels um, you know go off and find somebody who um, who appeals to you basically um, and if that doesn't help or you feel that you need more practical advice I would seriously look at signing up to a course I know that sounds ridiculous but there is an art to it and once you've got the art and once you understand the process the process suddenly is like oh that makes perfect sense but if you are struggling that's what I would do because there are some amazing people out there doing amazing composty stuff and one of the reasons that we need to start composting ourselves is so that we're not using the ingredients that could otherwise go into the industry. And that's a really important point. At the moment, it's amateur gardeners, so home gardeners effectively, who are going to see a ban from 2024. The industry has a ban coming. 
we just don't know when but what we do know is that they will be going back around the table shortly so probably in September to talk about when that's going to happen and be aware that what has happened in the past is that the industry has lobbied very, very hard and very, very heavily for peat use to continue in horticulture. So if you are a campaigning type, um, the campaign that we now need to get uh, our heads around is how to how to stop peat being used in industrial horticulture effectively. One of the things we do need to be a bit wary of is that um, pushing the industry to become peat free is really important but also understanding that um, a lot of plants that come in through Europe in fact 99.99999% if not 100% of them are grown in peat and, and there is no ban in Europe and goodness only knows if there is ever going to be one. Um, so it's fair enough that we get to a point where the industry has and can can access and resource enough compost before that's peat free before we before we totally ban it in, entirely. I think it's really important to remember that horticulture is a two point four billion pound a year industry, um, and whilst lots of us have issues with the commercialism and the plastic and the, all of that stuff behind that industry that suddenly banning peat tomorrow for the industry would mean that the industry failed um i can tell you that the rhs are on this i can tell you that i trust what i've been told by them and you know me i'm a bit of a cynic um but we do need to push for that ban to come sooner rather than later and one of the ways that we can help is by ensuring that we're making as much compost as we can ourselves. There are loads of myths around um, around peat-free compost um, that have been perpetrated by the industry. It's where I heard them first, so that's where they came from. Um, I would just say, it, just like with anything else, um, it's not what you use, it's how you use it. Um, and just in exactly the same way as if you change from one type of compost to another, even with peat in, it will behave slightly differently. Peat-free compost is a different product. You're not looking for an alternative. Um, there isn't an alternative. This is peat-free compost is a different product, and so therefore it needs to be treated differently. And by that, what I mean is. If you are using peat-free compost in pots at, to grow seeds, um, to grow containerized plants, etc., 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 you need to treat that compost differently. It's not going to behave the same. It needs a different feeding regime, and it definitely needs a different watering regime. That said, once you get those two things correct, growing in peat-free is just as easy as growing in, in anything else. Now at this point I think it's really important to point out that I'm a professional horticulturalist, I've grown in large-scale production nurseries and managed large-scale production nurseries. One of the biggest things I ever did was turn a large-scale production nursery from conventional peat-based growing into peat-free. Um, I did that over 15 years ago now. Um, it can be done, it's, it's really not difficult, it's just a process like anything else. So I've probably prattled on for long enough, um, but this series is going to demystify using peat. It's going to talk about the problems that people come to me with on a daily basis and say, but I used this and this didn't work or this happened with this. I'm going to admit that we all have problems with compost. I've had a problem with a compost this year um, and that's fine. Um, but it's it's about saying, OK, so I had that problem and learning from what went wrong rather than putting it in the bin and going, oh, that doesn't work. Um, because I can absolutely 100% promise you that a good peat free compost absolutely works as well as anything else. So this will be a series I'm going to look at 
the issues that people have with peat-free compost and how you overcome them. Um, I'm going to talk about different types of ingredients and how to work with those ingredients and talk about feeding and watering and all of the things that will mean that once we can only buy peat-free compost, not only are you understanding how it works, but you also are really, really confident and it won't be an issue whatsoever. Um, so strap in. <laughs> 